we will start to look at the topic of developments. A development is basically the layout of an object before it is bent or rolled into shape. Obviously then this means that the object will be hollow on the inside and that the object is made from thin pieces of material, uh, generally like sheet metal or something like that. So I want you to imagine that you have a box. We all have used cardboard boxes for a variety of reasons. The box is usually in the shape of a cube or a cuboid, like is represented on this page. So imagine that you had that box and you decided that you were going to open up that box or cut open that box by cutting the corners and opening it so that it were flat. What you would end up with then is that flat shape, which we can call a development of the box, because that's what it would look like stretched out on the floor or something like that before you folded it back into shape. So there is there's a method that has to be applied for producing these developments. Um, largely, we are still looking at orthographic projection, but there's a method that must be followed for you to be able to produce accurate developments for particular shapes. Uh, we are going to look at prisms and pyramids in this process. Um, we are going to look at cones and cylinders as well in this process. So we will start with two basic examples and you will note that these examples are also in the technical drawing textbook. So I'm using examples from the book so that you can reference those examples when you're working as well. So we take this cube that is represented on the page and I'm just going to take out the hidden detail for a sec. So I'm just going to take out the hidden detail for a sec for you and just let you see that this is what the cube would look like on the drawing page. Now, the hidden detail just allows you to see the other th three sides of the cube because you know the cube will have six squares basically um, making up the shape. Uh, before I do that, I just want to take off something that I just saw come up on the page. So, I'll just be deleting this because this won't apply to you at this point in time. So you have the cube and if I drop in the hidden lines then you just have the representation of the cube. So if you had to draw this cube in orthographic projection then you would basically end up with two squares. The front view being one square, the plan being another square and I will represent that for you now so that we can get an idea of what it looks like when we start to do the layout. So I'm working close to the top of the page because I want to fit more than one example on this sheet so that we can reference them a little bit later. So we have length of sides in this case 25 millimeters. So keeping it relatively small. What you would get here then would represent your front view, your plan, sorry. Let me just complete the view. And directly under that, we'd be plotting then your front view. We are working with third angle projection, so directly under that, and you know the drill, you would pull down the construction lines to give you the views lining up, but we won't pull the construction lines now. We'll just be working with the lines that are there on the page. So we just leave a convenient distance in this case, 
and we will just put down the plan quickly so this is the two views represented of this cube front view and plan uh, remember I said we're, we're basically using orthographic projection as part of our process so all sides measure the same we can now start to take from the front view the height and carry that distance across the page so we're starting to lay out what the development would look like um, in this case we're pulling just the line construction line across the page so the length of the line is not really significant at this point in time but you just pull that construction line across the page and you will leave a convenient distance so you have to be able to leave a space so that you are able to pull your lines and make the distinction that needs to be made on the drawing so we leave a convenient distance and we start to set up for the development so that space is left and you could imagine then that you have put some paint on the faces of this box and you're rolling the box over from side one side to the next all the time so in rolling the faces over you would really be putting a square a different square one next to each other as the box rolls and the box would be rolling four times so if we do that or we imagine that we're doing that then by using the array in this in the offset in this instance i can lay out those sides 25 because that's the length of the sides here 25 and go across like that for four squares being laid out on that horizontal now the box will also have a top and a bottom and so now I can just put on the top and bottom anywhere that I want to put them um, but you know generally we use the end of the, the construction for that so I can now come and pick up to draw to draw this box so now we are actually seeing six squares represented on the sheet if we do go then and we look to outline the shape then what we will have is now this being represented And this would be representing the real outline for the shape. So the outline is in blue. The construction lines are in red. To complete the construction, we would actually now have to put in hidden detail. Um, the hidden detail would be our yellow lines and what we would be doing here this hidden detail will be representing the lines that would be used to fold the box so that's why these lines here are represented as hidden detail because these folding lines would allow us To make the necessary folds 
to complete this box. If I took off now the construction lines, then you would be able to see the development being highlighted a little bit better. So this represents what a cube would look like if you were to open up the sides to lay out on a drawing page. Now, if this were a cuboid, then you would be seeing something slightly different. Um, but the process of getting it would be the same, where you're taking the heights off of the front view, pulling them across the page, and then producing the faces by marking off the dimensions. In this case, from the other view, which is the plan, um, you'd be able to mark off those distances on the page. So let's look at getting then another drawing setup and look at what that development will look like. I'm not giving you a three-dimensional drawing. Again, we will just lay out our front view and plan and then we will produce the elevation from there. So this drawing for us is going to be in first angle projection. Um, I'll lay it out as an outline straight off so that we can just work through a little quicker with the example. So this basically shows you an elevation and I'll just represent quickly a plan for you. And this is just giving you a plan of what this object would look like. Uh, just a cuboid, but we've cut off the top obliquely or at an angle. So we're following the same steps as we did for the first example, where we will use our construction lines and pull the heights of the drawing for the elevation across the page. So we start here. We just pull them across the page. We come here. We pull that height across the page as well. And then we pick up the next height here. And we pull that across the page as well. So we have the heights. Now again, we will leave a convenient distance. So in this case, we'll just I have to just take off the snap to end point to start this. Um, we'll just pick up our point for starting this, this piece and we set it out. So from here now, we're just going to lay out the height in the plan going across here four times. So Again, we can just use the offset function since we're using CAD and we know we want to offset that for the height that we have represented. So we just now just step off that distance again four times going across the page And that would be the four faces that we are representing. To lay out the construction, if you look at this carefully, you would realize that there is one face that's going to be a short face. Then there's going to be another face that's going to be having this sloping piece. There's going to be the tall, a tall face for the back of the drawing. And then a similar face to this one that's going to make up the rest of the drawing. So with that in mind, and we're starting opening the drawing at the short face, um, we should be able to quickly put in the other construction lines that would allow us to complete this drawing. So this drawing will, will have, once we start with a short side, this drawing will now have Another line being inserted 
here and then another line being inserted that line is a little off so I'll come back to that and another line being inserted here and just replace this line So that's what you have represented on the page. And you should be able in this case to complete the construction. It's not like you know this line looks at this point so I'll just take the opportunity to make it a little bit more accurate that's better um, so even though you're seeing the construction lines in red you should basically have picked up an idea of what the outline of the drawing will look like um, the drawing should also have a top and a bottom, but I'm not going to put them on yet. I'm going to outline, and then I'll come back and show you where the top and bottom would go. So I'll just move to outlining the drawing quickly so that you can see a little more clearly uh, what the final drawing will start to look like. So this is giving you now an example of what that final shape would look like. I can see that um, there are a couple of the lines that are off that haven't gone directly over the construction line. But this gives you an idea of what that final drawing would look like. Now, there is also going to be some hidden detail in the drawing because remember we said that we are folding the drawing. So based on what is represented on the page here, there will actually be three hidden detail lines in this drawing. So we can just drop those hidden detail lines in now. So these lines would represent the folding lines for the drawing. Now if I turn off the construction lines, you would get a better opportunity to see the end product. So this now would be a representation of what this shape would look like without the top and bottom um, this is what this shape would look like if it were represented as a development in a lot of instances you are not required to put on the top and bottom on a development so this is basically what you would have if you were representing these two figures as developments um, this is just the introduction so I will leave these two for you just to practice. Uh, you can use your own dimensions for the shapes, but I'll leave these two just for you to practice, just so that you can develop an understanding. And then in the next video, I will represent a few more so that we slowly work through making sure that we develop our understanding all at the same time. Uh, it is orthographic projection, so please bear in mind 
that the views will have to be labeled in much the same way front view plan and development so please bear that in mind as you work as well as we continue to work through these examples that you treat this like orthographic projection and you have to do the appropriate labeling of the time so you pick it up from here in another session